Is acceptance from others better than serving others? I'm going to invite you into my world just for a little bit, and I'm not saying that this is good or bad. It's just how it is. But we live in a time where when people are coming to a new church, they do so with all kinds of demands, namely pointed at the pastor and the leadership. Well, I need friends, so I'm coming to your church so you can make me friends. Which is especially hard when you have a name like Friendship Assembly because, I mean, it's kind of implied that, you know, <laughs> all right? But sometimes people will, will show up and, and they'll say, okay, well, you know, I, I want to be a part of your church, but I need to know what denomination you're a part of. Now, here's, here's my response to that. In, in many cases, it is important to understand that the church that you're attending is actually preaching doctrinal truth. And sometimes, sometimes denominations can play a part in that. But I will tell you, especially in our day today, Denominations are more about making sure that pastors are appointed than they are the people who are gathering under them. Does that make sense? So we get in a lot of fights today about this denomination and that denomination without understanding the main purpose for denominations in this country is mainly to appoint and ordain pastors who are going to teach doctrine. And so where sometimes we get into this huge debate on, well, I don't like this denomination, I don't like that denomination, as if it really has an influence on us, the most important thing is that the local church teaches the doctrines of the Bible. And sometimes we don't even know, we don't even know what denominations mean. We don't even understand that it has to do with ordaining pastors. And so we think, oh, you're that denomination? Oh, we can't be friends. I can't associate with you. <laughs> the most important thing is doctrine. Are they preaching the Bible? And when they preach the Bible, does it have any effect on you? Like, are you walking away with growth? Are you walking away with challenge? Are you being transformed? Those are the things that matter. But when people are more interested in acceptance from others, they prioritize that and say, well, what can your church do for me? Let me tell you, the church can do nothing for you because everything that's good that's been done for you has not been done by the church. It's been done by Jesus Christ. Don't get it mixed up. Jesus has done everything that you need. And if you're going to look to the church, my friends, you are going to be so disappointed and so frustrated and so irritated because the church is the transformed body of people to look more like Christ, not the agency to make you happy. Jesus is the agent to make you happy. And he chooses to give you joy over happiness. Mm -hmm. And his call is to show you that every good thing that you could ever want comes from him. And so when we look at, are we part of the church? We need to ask ourselves, are we just going to a place to be accepted or are we going to a place to serve? Now, if you don't have Christ in your life, you probably don't know how to serve well. So you need to be discipled. You need to be trained. You need to learn the word before you're ready to serve. But if you know Jesus and you've been around a little bit, why aren't you serving? Well, well pastor, I got so much going on right now. I am so glad that nothing stopped Jesus with everything that was going on from him to step out of heaven. Aren't you glad? that he didn't come up with every excuse to not get off the throne and come rescue us? And when we say we follow Christ, or we say we are a Christian, shouldn't we behave at least similar to Jesus? But it's amazing. It's amazing how many times we say we follow Christ, but always say no to him when he asks us to go in any direction with him. Oh, well, no, I've got this thing. <laughs> Remember when Jesus talked about the wedding feast? That one still gets me. I'm telling you, it's fresh right here. When Jesus said, let me tell you what the kingdom of God is like. There was a great wedding feast. Man, this thing was huge. 
The king put it on. He was a ruler. Oh, my goodness. Everybody who is anybody should want to be at this feast. But you know what happened? He sent out invitations to the who's who. And the who's who, this is the Brad's literary translation, okay? The who's who open the invitation. And when they open the invitation, they say, oh, man, this is incredible. I'm so glad you invited me. But we got other things to do. They come up with the worst excuses. I got married, so I can't come. That's kind of weird if you think about that for a second. The other one, I bought a new pair of oxen. I have to go inspect them. I'd be like saying, I've got to get an oil change. I can't come to church. I've heard that excuse. Anyway, the excuses go on and they get worse and worse and worse and they get back to the master and the master is furious. He's like, all right, well, this incredible feast that I've prepared for them, none of them will taste it. But I tell you what, I want all my servants to go out into the highways and the byways. I want you to find anybody and everybody and you get them in here. And so the servants did it. And they found everybody you can imagine. And still there was some room. And so he sends them even further. He says, go out to the highway, man. Go, in, go to the farthest reaches, find them, bring them in. And they do. And they all tasted the feast that should have been for those who were invited. But those who were invited had too many other things to do. My friends, sometimes God is begging us to get in line with him and to serve, and we come up with every reason why we can't. And we think we're getting out of something that may be uncomfortable. We think we're getting out of something that may just be a, a wear and tear on our lives, and all the while we are denying the greatest blessing that God could bring into our lives, and that is learning how to serve in his kingdom. I know sometimes that we value our comfort zone over serving and that holds us back from doing God's will. But church, hear me. The greatest things in your life will come out of being close to Jesus. And if you want to be close to Jesus, you're going to have to serve with him. There was a pastor that I was under and he was a busy guy. And I remember whenever I try and get his attention, he was always in the middle of something else or, or, or doing something else. And so I would never, I would get pat answers, quick, quick things, and it just never would happen. And I learned the only way that I could make sure that I could have a continuous conversation is whatever he was doing, whatever project he was on, I would go and do that project with him. I would go and I would work alongside of him. And when that happened, he heard everything that I had to say. And I still feel the Holy Spirit nudging. See what I was teaching you? Sometimes we want God to just break into our lives and figure out everything that we want done in the moment, right here, right now. God, you're five seconds late. Where yet? And God's like, I tell you what, why don't you come serve alongside of me and you'll see how I make provision in every situation. And so when it comes to understanding that we have a place where we're supposed to get our assignment orders versus just a place to fit in, that's where God teaches us to serve. And my friends, you will learn more about the Lord. You will grow in your faith. You will increase in what God wants in your life when you learn to serve.